Charting and Graphing Data in LabVIEW. How do we do it? There are many options, but the foundational displays in LabVIEW would be the waveform chart and the waveform graph. How do they differ? It's pretty simple. The waveform charts accumulate data points and waveform graphs refresh their display when they receive new data. Well, what does that look like? Let's go into LabVIEW and find out. Here on my front panel, I'll go to my graph palette, tack it down and choose a waveform chart and a waveform graph. Now they look a little different. The waveform graph has grid lines, the waveform chart doesn't, but that's changeable. I can remove the grid lines from here and put them there. I can make them look exactly the same. So let's see how they differ in code. First, I'll take my waveform chart indicator and I'm going to pass some data to it. Let's just use a random number function in a while loop and we'll put some timing in here. We'll have this run 10 times a second. As we run it, we see that 10 times a second, we get data appearing on our chart. Let's put this in highlight execution and watch what happens. Over and over, we see that we're reading one piece of data. It goes to the waveform chart indicator and then shows up here. Now we say that the waveform chart accumulates data points because all the rest of the data is left up there. In fact, if I take this off highlight execution and let it run for a second, and then go back and stop it, put this at zero, then we see that we actually have a history of all that data. I could keep running this for a while and put all the data that I have on this chart. By default, there is a chart history length. If I right click, chart history length, I see it's 1024. Of course, I can make that as big as I want, obviously keeping in mind that the bigger I make that, the more memory I'm using. So make it too big, and it could slow down my program. Now let's run this again, and I can right-click on this, and I can go to Update Mode, and I can see that there's Strip, Scope, and Sweep Charts. Those used to be part of the CLAD exam, though it looks like, thankfully, they've been eliminated, as they had absolutely no bearing on one's ability to program well in LabVIEW. It was pretty easy to wire up this waveform chart, can I do the same with the waveform graph? Can I just take this wire coming from the random number function and wire it into here? Well, we see that doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Our tip strip, if we hover over, tells us you have connected two terminals of different types. The type of the source is a double. The type of a sync is a 1D array of doubles. In other words, this random number function outputs a single scalar value, whereas this waveform graph expects an array. And the reason that it expects an array stems from the fact that it refreshes its data each time it receives it. Meaning it throws out all the old data and puts up all the new data whenever it receives data. Which means if it could accept a scalar, it'd be a pretty bad display because it would just be a single lonely data point sitting there by itself. And so we can see that the waveform graph at least needs an array. So what's an easy way to get that? Well, with a loop, we know we can use auto-indexing. I can do auto-indexing with a while loop, but it's smarter to do it with a for loop because I create an array of a known size. So I'll right-click on the while loop, replace with a for loop, and I'll have it run 10 times. I'll take this out here, wire this through the border, to the waveform graph indicator, and as we can see, it auto indexes the output. I can get rid of the stop button. Here's my scalar wire, here's my array of values. So I'll run it again. Now, they don't exactly seem to match because the waveform chart still kept all this previous data. I'll right click on it, date operations clear chart, run it again, and we see that we actually have the same data. If I put this 
and 9, they look exactly the same. Of course, if I run this again, I get 10 new data points, and they match up. Now, obviously, I see the data arrive point by point on the waveform chart, but then on the waveform graph, I see it arrive all at once. And that's because of the data flow that's occurring here. This is getting data each loop iteration, whereas this receives data all at the end after the loop finishes. Remember that the loop is a node, and a node doesn't output its data until it finishes execution. One last point, can I also go take the waveform chart and have it accept an array as well? Sure I can. I can pull this out here, control B to clean up that broken wire, and wire the array directly into the waveform chart. Run it again. And now both of these receive data at the same time. Though of course, as I keep running this, we see that my waveform chart is still accumulating data points, whereas my waveform graph does not. Always 0 to 9, the waveform chart still accumulating, and at any time I can go back to 0 and see it all. So that's the fundamental difference between the two, and in our next episode, we'll see how to manipulate the time, create multiple plots, and eventually we'll compare these with XY graphs. Hopefully you've accumulated some knowledge in this episode. See you next time.